I'm Mark Robbins. Um, I'm probably known as being a woodland photographer more than anything else, but I, I, I shoot all the landscape really. It's it's not limited to, to woodland despite what I'm probably boxed off as. I first picked up the camera in 2012 and it was basically just to shoot family portraits so after my son was born. So I was just shooting family portraits and then I used to do a lot of uh, track days. So I was into motorsports. So I'd take my camera to motorsports and shoot motorsport. And it sort of developed from there when I got my Labrador, Ella. So I'd be out walking her in the woods and then I'd see nice things and I would take photos of her in nice places and then it developed into just shooting the landscape and the trees. I have spent a lot of time in Snowdonia. Um, I say that I've got that natural sort of relationship with Wales because we used to go and stay on the coast there. That that was our annual holiday. We didn't we didn't go anywhere else. It was always Wales. Um, so I've I've got that sort of natural connection to the area, and we drive through. Snowdonia on the way to the coast. For me, it's the ruggedness and how wild it can feel. Because, yeah, there's a lot of man-made influence. E even in the woods, there's, you know, there's evidence of things that have gone on in terms of farming and that sort of stuff, agricultural stuff, mining. But it feels so ancient and it's quite easy to get away from these little elements and create images that feel totally wild, like untouched. So I, I photograph the woodlands because they give me a sense of calm. And basically with, with everything that I've got going on in life, life's busy, it's hectic. Um, it gives me a place to go and just forget about everything. It's meditation, really, for me. It puts me in a meditative state to be amongst all this chaos. You can't let the outside thoughts come in, because if they do, then you won't see anything. So you have to shut off to everything that's going on in your daily life. It's meditation more than the actual photography itself. The photography is just a byproduct of what comes from it. Like I've naturally become a woodland photographer because of my local area and it's, it's what's available to me. So it's if I go out for a walk, it'll be in the woods. You know, living in Cheshire, there's, there's not much else. So when I go for a walk, I go up to the woods, but the coast in particular has been sort of somewhere that's special to me since I was a child. Growing up in sort of Stoke-on-Trent, living in council houses, we'd get away once a year. So we'd, we'd go to the coast in Wales, stay in a caravan for the week, and that, that was sort of our respite as kids. The distance I have to travel to get there means it's not something that I can do regularly. And I, I need to be outside regularly. It's a part of sort of what eases me, what settles me, and it's just a, the outdoors is a part of my life. But not only that, I'd see my, my nan was a painter, a landscape seascape painter. So I'd see her painting at the sea. So it's, it, the coast has always been something that's pretty special to me. How has uh, her 
paintings influenced your photography? Probably massively, Desp despite not really thinking about it when I'm out making images. I, I think sort of her paintings have always sort of held like a special place in, in my head where, you know, I, I can still see them now on the wall. I can see a painting and I mean, she, she really held the family together. She was the head of the family, my nan. So she, she was somebody that everybody looked up to anyway. My dad was creative as well. So he used to paint. So my dad was a painter, my nan was a painter. So I've, I sort of had that from an early age, but I think being creative when you're young, especially in sort of the locations that I grew up in, it, it was sort of frowned upon, I suppose. It, it wasn't something that was readily accepted. As, as a kid. So it, it's not something that I delved into until later on in life. But I always saw art as, as something that wasn't, just wasn't something for me. You know, it, it's, it's always been for the higher classes, I suppose. It, it, it just wasn't on the cards for, really for people from where I, where I grew up. It, it's human and I think it'll naturally come out regardless of the stigma of being a child and being a teenager especially. You know, people take the mick for, for all sorts of reasons and creativity is one of the, you know, if, if you're a creative person, you'll generally get the mick taken out of you. You know, it was, it was all about sports when, when I was growing up. So it was like being one of the lads getting stuck in. So going out with a camera would have been something that was, yeah, and it's not just me, you know, a lot of people probably shied away from that aspect just because of outside opinion. And when you're young, outside opinion, it's, it's a big thing. For me, it, if, if I can show somebody something and it gets them excited to go out and either explore and search for things for themselves or it inspires them to pick up a camera or just a pencil and sketch away on a notebook. You know, it's, it, there's, all, there's all different levels of creativity and that's, I think, the ultimate aim is to just get people outdoors, just trying new things and being creative. The landscape gives me a place to tell my, tell my stories as well. So it's, it's not just limited to sort of clearing my head. So I, could, I can tell stories from the past. It, it, it sort of... It's meditation, but it's also a form of counselling, if that makes sense. So I, I can go over things that happened when I was a child and then bring that into my photography. It's a way of sort of dealing with it. So going over them traumas and then actually coming to terms with it and dealing with it. Yeah, so it, it's finding the, the, the relationship in the landscape with myself and with my story and hopefully sort of telling that story with my photography. But it, I don't have to tell the story. You know, I, I, I know the story and it's, I don't have to tell the whole sort of thing. It, it, the image is open to interpretation, the finished product. I might put a title to the image something that I usually do which could possibly give an idea but it doesn't really. Do you make images for yourself first and foremost? Yeah, it's, it's always for myself. I think if, if I was just out shooting for other people I probably wouldn't be shooting what I'm shooting. It's, it's not always popular so I just shoot for myself and then if people enjoy it, they enjoy it. And as long as it's got that sort of meaning and connection for me, then that works. So emotion and how we bring what we're seeing and feeling from the outdoors into our photography. It's, I think it's, we get, the emotion from all sorts of things. So it, it can be the weather, it can be the mood of the day and how we sort of pick up on that and 
not only that, but the way we're feeling at the time. So things that we've got going on in our life can affect the sort of images that we'll end up making. So it, it's, a, it's a combination of the two, but then also the subject. So what you're pointing your camera at, because it's, it's like in the woods, different trees have different sort of feelings for me. So silver birch are generally quite cheery, delicate, elegant. So I usually go for something a little bit more warm, higher key, something to, that represents the tree, but also represents the way that I'm feeling. So when I go into the woods, if I'm feeling sort of quite positive and cheery, I'll, I'll look for silver birch. Sort of just naturally, I, that, that's what I'll gravitate towards and I'll, I'll shoot birch for the day. And then when I'm sort of not feeling so great, I'll probably go chasing the uh, gnarly oak trees. And they've naturally got a mood that lends itself to some darker elements and darker elements alive. So I, I can relate the oaks back to my childhood just through some of the male influences that came into my life growing up. I basically, it wasn't that long into my journey as a landscape photographer and I was in Snowdonia and there's a big inversion. And at the time I, I wasn't really a, a woodland photographer, I was just shooting big landscapes, like classic shots, but I was sort of venturing into trying to find something of my own. And then I walked up through the inversion, got above it, and then I saw these, the Scots pine up on top of a hill. So I kept going, kept going, got up there, and then there was a, it ended up being two Scots pines. And there was a relationship between the two of them and a view over the valley and all the atmosphere just sunk in the valley and nice clouds up above them. And it, it was, the conditions that made the image, but it was the relationship between the trees that really sort of captured my imagination and held me. Because the sort of foreground tree was sort of damaged and gnarly. And then beyond that, there was a sort of pine that was sort of pristine. So there was that relationship between sort of a damaged thing and something that's not. And I called it the guardian, the image. And like growing up, I was the eldest. So I had to shoulder a lot of what went on. So I'd make sure my brother and sister were kept out of arm's way and we'd run off sometimes. Like the, the, the fighting at home would get that bad that like I'd, I'd take my brother and we'd, we'd, we'd run off to my aunties live like three miles away back when I was like seven. So, you know, it, it, it was it was that sort of relationship. So after I took the image, I, I just sort of sat there for a bit. It was, it was a weird moment because I, I saw it in the field and that emotion from being a child and the relationship between my childhood and seeing the image, seeing these two trees it just sort of hit me. So, and that was sort of the, the stumbling block into trees, really. It's when I first felt that connection, that really sort of deep connection that's dragged me back to trees. And sort of the power of being able to tell the story that they can give you. <laughs>